everyone. Welcome to Historically Speaking, an online YouTube history channel focused on the history of various institutions and professionals, um, how history intersects with education, gender, equality, and culture, and the world around us. I'm Karen Yang, host of Historically Speaking. Um, today we're here with Melissa Jones, the Director of Marketing of the Women's Museum of California. And the mission of the Women's Museum of California is to educate and inspire present and future generations about the experiences and contributions of diverse women by collecting, preserving, and interpreting their stories. Um, the Women's Museum of California is a museum without walls and operates online and in person um, throughout San Diego County. Um, Melissa is an expert in digital marketing, working for and with various other organizations. And I'm so pleased to have her here with us today. Um, Melissa, thank you so much for joining me in the super important conversation. Is there anything else you'd like to add in regards to the bio or um, what the Women's Museum of California is all about, I guess? No, um, thank you so much for having me. And I'm just so excited to talk to you about the Women's Museum today. For sure, thank you so much. Um, I guess like my first question is kind of like a very um, holistic or very general one, I guess. Um, so how has the Women's Museum of California tried to spread education and equality or like how does this look like for the Museum of California in particular? Yeah, that's a really great question, you know, because that's really what we are all about. The Women's Museum sees itself not just a recorder of the Women's Museum, but an active participant in mm -hmm. the women's movement and mm -hmm. our, you know, continual mission to achieve gender equality mm -hmm. um, by talking to not just girls, but, you know, students of all genders and students can be, you know, from elementary school all the way up to our lifelong learners um, mm -hmm. in retired, you know, communities. Um, mm -hmm. And just talking to them all about the contributions that women have made to our society, both mm -hmm. in the past and today, and uplifting those stories, as well as providing a safe place for people to tell their stories. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's going into schools, um, talking to different groups and organizations, and as well as just the general public. Mm -hmm. That sounds really, really awesome. I really liked um, how you kind of portray the museum as kind of this active participant, um, because so often I think um, personally, before um, I got really into this like history and into the museums a lot of times, I think a lot of times the public um, kind of views museums as maybe like a record holder or a place where like all of these like old artifacts may just like kind of reside, kind of like a warehouse maybe for pieces of history. Um, while in reality, I think museums and these different institutions really have like an active participant um, role kind of in shaping the narrative and exposing people to new ideas and new thoughts. And I think that's a really important role of museums that we need to highlight more often, to be honest, for sure. Yeah. Mm hmm. So um, I guess my second question kind of elaborates on that. Um, what kind of stories does the Women's Museum of California try to tell? And like, why are these particular stories important? And um, how does the museum tell them, I guess? I think the idea of like museum without walls is super interesting for sure. Yeah, you know, um, we're here to tell stories of diverse women and their contributions and how they've made a positive difference in mm -hmm. Um, their communities and our communities. And that involves not just, you know, me being able to tell a story, doing research, but inviting other people, other women's groups, organizations, mm -hmm. historians of all different backgrounds, mm -hmm. um, this platform to tell their stories. Because, you know, we exist for a reason that in our history books, in other more mainstream museums, women are reduced to the margins they're not seen or heard enough. Mm -hmm. So we try to do the best to make sure then that everyone's story is told. And so that's working collaboratively mm -hmm. with just anyone we can. Mm -hmm. um, and we do that, you know, online with our digital exhibits and our, you know, digital programs and panel discussions. Mm -hmm. And as well as in person, um, we have two locations in San Diego where we do programming as well as just pop-up programs and exhibits all throughout Southern California mm -hmm. um, to make sure that we're really just, we don't want people necessarily to come to us. We want to come to them and make it mm -hmm. as easy and as convenient, convenient and as equitable as possible, mm -hmm. because sometimes it's just really difficult to go out. Um, I mean, San Diego County 
alone is such a huge place. Mm-hmm. Um, it might be a lot easier for us to come and bring the stories to you mm-hmm. than for it is to come and visit us. hundred percent. Yeah. I think that's a really like innovative way of looking at it. I guess that also plays more to the role of museums being very active in like kind of like reaching out and not necessarily like um, just letting the people kind of come to it, but the museum coming to the people and meeting the people in the very communities that the history is all about and the stories are all about. And I think that's super, super important again in just like kind of knocking aside a lot of these people's perceptions of museums and um, seeking and making it easier to tell these awesome stories by just like reaching out and um, putting that applicability, I guess, in their own communities for sure. Um, so I guess like a little more history about the Women's Museum of California. Um, so like what has really inspired the founding of the museum, uh, Women's Museum of California? Yeah, so our museum was founded in 1983 by a woman named Mary Maskell. When Mm -hmm. she was a young girl, she wanted to be a pastor and her father was like, no, you can't do that. You're a girl. Mm -hmm. Um, so she went on, she lived her life, you know, she got married, she had some kids and she found herself moved out to California because she was in the Midwest. Mm -hmm. and it was there that she actually met women who were doing things Mm -hmm. and it just never occurred to her it wasn't like she didn't think was possibility Mm -hmm. it was just never she just never thought that she could have a job or go out Mm -hmm. there and make a difference and just do things before Mm -hmm. until she came out to California and Mm -hmm. she didn't want any girl to grow up the way that she did and Mm -hmm. was told no Mm -hmm. She wanted to make sure that every girl grew up knowing that they could do whatever it is that they wanted to do, because there has already been a path laid out by so many other women who have broken Mm -hmm. down so many barriers. So it's like, oh, you can't be a doctor or you can't be a pastor or whatever. Like, no, because there's been women been doing that since the 1700s. And then at the same time, she understood that it was equally important that our young boys grew up learning this history as well. Mm -hmm. because so often we only have this discussion with girls Mm -hmm. where we're like everyone gets to learn about the presidents and just a quitting they're all men but then the girls can learn about like Amelia Earhart on the side as like a little inspirational moment and the boys then get locked out of that conversation Mm -hmm. and we need to include everyone Mm -hmm. um, that this is everyone's history Mm -hmm. so that boys grow up knowing that girls can be their equals And more Mm -hmm. importantly, when they grow up, women can be their bosses and leaders. Mm -hmm. So that's really Mm -hmm. the foundation of it, that she just didn't want any child to be denied these stories. Mm -hmm. And she really got into community, joined a whole bunch of different women's groups, like, you know, the National Organization for Women. And Mm -hmm. um, she got really involved in her church. And one of the things that she did was would drive older women to church. Um, Mm -hmm. And one of those women that she was really close to sadly passed away. Mm -hmm. So she went to go and clean out this woman's home. And it was there that Mary found all this suffrage material, just like postcards and banners and all Mm -hmm. this stuff. And she was like, oh my goodness, what is this? And her Mm -hmm. friend's family was like, we don't know our mom's a hoarder. It turns out that her friend's mother was a suffragist, like a leading wow. California suffragist wow. that no one knew. And the family was just like, it's just our mom's letters. We don't really care about it. So Mary literally dumpster dove, saved all this history from the trash, brought it back to her home. Mm-hmm. And it was there where she opened up her living room for conversation, invite people over, talk to them about the suffrage movement, how important it was how, you know, women gaining their um, entrance into political sphere is a transformative thing that happened in this country. Mm -hmm. Um, And people be like, oh, Mary, this is so fantastic. I have all this stuff from Planned Parenthood. You might Mm -hmm. want it. I have all this stuff from now. Would you like it? And so she just started collecting all this stuff until finally they're like, Mary, you actually need to open it up for the public. And she did. And that's how the museum was founded in 1983. Oh my gosh, that is such a real, that's such a cool story, first of all, that, like, I think it's also a testament to the fact that, like, we have so many people that we can, that are, like, so influential in history all around us, and we might not even be aware of that, and that's super, super cool. I also really like the idea of how she really just, like, 
wanted to pave the way genuinely for all these different people um and that really inspired like kind of the mission of the museum the women's museum of california and you can still see that mission like occurring all around today which i find is really really beautiful um i also think like that's just really interesting in that a lot of times like the history that we um should celebrate is just kind of hidden all around us and that it's just really up to us to kind of like untap it and get it out there um and again exposing both girls and boys um and everyone just like to this awesome history is really really necessary um in that like definitely um just through my own studies of like AP US history um just like United States history I think a lot of it um a lot of like the feminist movements and a lot of the movements that women are a lot like a huge part of often seem like they were really contradictory to the men at that time period um which with the system largely being like um focused on men or enabling men to do better or be better without having to make a lot of sacrifices that women have to make um, kind of makes sense. But at the same time, I feel like working together to kind of understand this will create a lot less friction and is also very, very necessary. And I'm really glad that's something that you brought up for sure. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so personally, before doing a lot of this like deep diving into the museums, I've actually never heard of the Women's Museum of California. And I'm not sure a lot of people watching from home would have also like heard or like knew about this awesome museum. Um, so I guess my other question would be like, how can the general public use the Women's Museum of California's resources to better promote equality and better promote the Women's Museum of California's mission? Yeah, I mean, if you're in the Southern California area, come out and visit us, um, go to some of our programs. They're always just so inspiring, um, not just talking about women from the past, but also what are women currently doing? Mm -hmm. so we give that context of, you know, what's going on today um, and just getting to really meet some really cool change makers and trailblazers that are with us today. Mm -hmm. um, so if you're in the Southern California area, come down and see what we're, what we're doing. Um, but if you're not, we do so much stuff online. I mean, especially in the past couple of years with our digital exhibits, we have a whole section on our website for educational resources and lesson plans. So if you're a teacher or an educator in any other capacity, see how you can include the story of women into your lessons mm -hmm. um, and how we can just better um, diversify our topics. Mm -hmm. um, like I say, we're never taking away or changing the history that we all know and love. Mm -hmm. We're just making it a little bit fuller. Mm -hmm. um, so we have, um, yeah, digital exhibits, educational stuff. We have video series um, where you go on our YouTube channel and mm -hmm. watch different videos about different women and in an interview series that we do. Um, our most recent video is with a Ukrainian refugee who just arrived in San Diego. So it's just mm -hmm. like, again, those really topical things talk about women's lives today as well as the past and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, a blog post. And we're always, you know, we're such a volunteer oriented organization we mm -hmm. have such a grassroots origin and mm -hmm. we still like to continue that kind of grassroots mobilizing so mm -hmm. if you're interested in the women's movement if you love history or current events or anything like that we're always looking for volunteers and those volunteers can be virtual anywhere in the country as well you're looking for contributors for our blog um, and things like that is we are a platform for everyone to safely tell their stories mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I definitely like the idea again that you um uh, keep bringing up with this very much like diversifying the story and just like telling everyone's narrative and finding a room for everyone's narrative I think that is also super super awesome and I think that um with this grassroots idea and this kind of like hands-on like telling your own story and also telling the story of so many women who are still alive right now and creating a lot of this awesome change is also just like continuing to push the museum and continuing to push this history to our own present day and kind of seeing where we can learn from all that history and seeing where we can learn from the stories of other people as well so again beyond cool so cool for sure 
Um, is there anything else you'd like to add or anything else you'd like to, I guess, like shout out or anything else like that before we wrap up? You know, I think I'd like to say if people are sitting up there, um, I think a kind of common theme in this conversation has definitely been tell your own stories. Um, and you might not think that you've lived a life of importance or anything, but that's not always necessarily for you to decide. Mm -hmm. It's for the public to decide in a few generations, right? Mm -hmm. So one thing that we have a problem or a, one of the challenges in women's history is that people discard items or other evidence of the history. So it's really hard for us then to like showcase these things. Mm -hmm. So if you have something from your grandmother's or great grandmother or your mother, or even something that speaks to yourself, keep it, record it, write about it save it for later, keep mm -hmm. passing down those histories and those mm -hmm. stories mm -hmm. um, because you and your lived experience is enough and it is an example of what society is at the time, what the economy is at the time, what the politics were at the time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you as an individual have already played an important role in history. Um, so just preserve it, take care of it, and encourage other people to do the same mm -hmm. um, because a, we were just a group of people um, in the 80s who just started doing it ourselves. You mm -hmm. can too, because mm -hmm. once we all start doing it, all our stories will be mainstream. Mm -hmm. And that's the whole purpose of our organization. Mm -hmm. I really like that idea because like even with the founding of the Women's Museum of California, we really see that idea of just like her family um, just being kind of like, yeah, it's just a bunch of stuff. We don't really know what it is. We're not too interested in it. But then um, being able to dive into it and seeing all this like valuable like treasure, to be honest, um, come from it also just goes to prove that we're also constantly making our own history. And we're also making history that impacts a lot of different people in the future. And that a large part of just like keeping those ideas is just writing it down and speaking about it and just noting it down and again kind of letting the future generations kind of decide and I think that's a really cool idea of just knowing that we also have a really unique impact on history and our own legacy carries on for a long time longer than we may actually think for sure yeah uh, yeah that's, I don't know I think that's just really cool for sure 100% um, but yeah, that'll be it for our conversation today. Um, thank you again, Melissa, for joining me and um, I'll see everyone in the next video.